For those of you who do your best to follow the halal food guidelines, well, you might be surprised to know that certain food products are not quite as halal as you might think and are in fact haram. Hey, what's happening FTD fam? Welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and I hope this video doesn't really spoil anyone's food life too badly, but either way, let's jump into the list. At number 10, we have Grandma Oots chips. Many oil fried potato chips, such as Grandma Oots, they are typically fried in lard. So you gotta be very careful when purchasing a pack of these. Alternatively, you can look for potato chips that are fried using vegetable oils like you know canola oil, sunflower, or even corn oil. And some people might even want to avoid fatty oils completely in their chips. So there are some other healthier options, like there's a lot of big chip options as well. But aside from the oil that the chips are fried in, they also come in a wide variety of flavors which can be problematic for those who want to eat halal. So be sure to check the back of the package for the ingredients and the flavors and the seasonings. Keep your eyes out for names like tallow, which is animal fat, shortening, also animal fat, pepsin, which is enzymes from the stomachs of pigs, or suet, which is fat from around the kidneys of animals. A lot of people don't even know what these ingredients are, but yeah, just broke them down for you. As an extra precaution, vegan certified chips such as Kettle Foods Organic Potato Chips and Good Health Potato Chips are sure to contain no animal byproducts. So yeah, those will be 100% halal. Next up at number nine, we have Planters Dried Roasted Peanuts. Mm, these are so good. It's easy to assume that roasted peanuts are simple in ingredients, you know, just salt and peanuts. However, planters peanuts are not completely simple, nor are they free from haram animal products. So check this. When you look at the ingredients list, you'll see that there's gelatin derived from pork. Gelatin, along with the salt and spices, helps to create an added flavor, making planters dried roasted peanuts not a good option for those eating halal. A good alternative is simply making your own roasted peanuts at home or look for brands that have no animal byproducts in them. Pillsbury pie crust is at number eight. Many store-bought pie crusts include lard to hold the ingredients together. One example is Pillsbury's pie crust. See the flakiness of the Pillsbury pie crust? Well, that's due to lard, pig fat, making it unfit for halal consumption. As a halal substitute for Pillsbury's pie crust, instead of lard, look for other pie crusts that contain butter. That's a really good alternative. Marshmallows of various brands come in at number seven. Although marshmallows are definitely essential for any camping trip, like literally nothing is like roasted marshmallows on a campfire, I'm just saying, but they almost always contain gelatin in order to maintain that soft, spongy texture. Now, some do not contain pig gelatin, but it should specify on the pack, so it's definitely up to you to like 100% double check. Famous American brands like Jet Puffed Kraft Marshmallows, Campfire Marshmallows, and Kroger Marshmallows are all made with pork gelatin, so something to keep in mind. And popular cereals from companies such as Kellogg's and General Mills also contain marshmallows with beef and pork gelatin. You can look for gelatin-free marshmallows or those that are labeled with halal, vegan, or kosher certified seals on their packages. At number six, frosted mini wheat cereal. Kellogg's frosted mini wheat cereal contains gelatin that comes from the skin, bones, ligaments, and tendons of beef. Other Kellogg's products that contain gelatin include all cereals with marshmallows, Rice Krispies, and those Rice Krispie treat bars, also frosted Pop-Tarts and fruity snacks and food bars. So in order to avoid cereals with gelatin, what you can do is that you can eat Kellogg's All Brand Flakes or Crunchy Nut Glorious Oat Granola and products like that. Halfway in this episode at number five, we have Jell-O. 
Jell-O, of course, is widely known by many people to have gelatin in it. It's a gelatin-based food that comes in a wide variety of flavors. And Jell-O is very jiggly, and that jiggly consistency is due to the use of gelatin, which is extracted from the collagen tissues of animals, including pork and beef. As an alternative to Jell-O, what you can do is look for similar products that are made of plant-based ingredients like agar agar, such as those from Simply Delish. Starburst comes in at number four. Candies with chewy consistencies, they're known to contain animal products. And you see those Starburst fruit flavored soft taffy candy? Yeah, they're so addictive and like, you just wanna keep chewing them and for me, I hate when they finish, you know? But those, they contain gelatin made with animal bones. In the United States, for example, Starburst may not be halal to eat, but Starburst products imported from the UK are actually suitable for the halal consumers since they are said to be vegetarian certified. Earheads as well as Laffy Taffy are completely free of animal byproducts. Number three, we got Altoids. Some of the famous Altoids breath mints, they contain gelatin from pigs. Yeah, a lot of people are surprised when they learn this. There are many flavors of Altoids and you'll find that the original sugared ones, they contain gelatin, but the non-sugared Altoids, they're actually halal since they do not contain any sort of animal products in them. Skittles, Tic Tac, and Mentos, they're all halal chewy sweet alternatives. Number two, Chocolate lovers, I'm sorry, but chocolate with alcohol. This, this is something that's pretty big and for all you halal eaters out there, yeah, be careful about this one. Chocolates like certain kinds of truffle chocolates can contain alcohol in them. So you definitely gotta check the pack before you eat. And they say like if you eat too much of these, you can actually start to feel the effects of the alcohol. You can actually get drunk. Like it takes a 100 gram block of Cointreau Swish liqueur chocolate. 8% of that by weight is Cointreau, which is around 40% alcohol by volume. So that is around eight milliliters of liqueur per block of chocolate. A standard shot is 30 milliliters, so you would need to eat almost four 100 gram blocks of chocolate to get one shot of liqueur. Yeah, that's a lot. But either way, back to the point, you gotta be careful when it comes to the chocolate that you eat because yeah, they can contain alcohol. And we end this episode off at number one, cake mix. Yeah, various type of cake mix. Beef and pork fat, they're actually common ingredients in dry boxed cake mixes. And these fats are often listed on the ingredients listed as lard. So to avoid any haram additions to your cake, your cupcakes, your brownies, or whatever, you can opt into homemade versions or you can look for brands that are free from all of these animal products. And that is actually probably your best option because uh, a lot of people don't wanna do this, do it yourself, do it from home, find out all the ingredients and make it yourself. No, they wanna to go to the store, buy it pre-mixed and then make their cake or brownies just like that. I know I'm that kind of person. But either way, guys, this was a look at 10 food products that you didn't know were haram. Did any of them surprise you? I'm curious to know. Sound off down below in the comment section. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here on FTD Facts. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.